Day 31 of the 33 days to Eucharistic glory. The way of virtue. This is the will of God that you be holy. 800 years ago, a young Italian man searching for meaning in his life went into a dilapidated old church and heard the voice of God speak to him. Rebuild my church. As you can see, it is in ruins. If you and I listen carefully, I believe we will hear the same voice saying the same thing today. The young man was Francis of Assisi. His first reaction was to repair and rebuild a number of churches in and around Assisi. But the voice kept calling to him, Francis, rebuild my church. As you can see, it is in ruins. Over the past 50 years, we have spent a lot of time, energy, and money building and restoring the physical facilities of our churches. But the voice of God continues to call to us. Once again, God is saying, rebuild my church. And the rebuilding that needs to be done now is of a spiritual nature. The only way for our lives to genuinely approve is by acquiring virtue. Similarly, it is impossible for a society to genuinely improve unless its members grow in virtue. The renewal that the church and society so desperately needs is a renewal of virtue. And it is our relationship with Jesus that gives us the strength, the grace, and the wisdom to grow in virtue. What is virtue? It is a habitual and firm disposition to do good. The great fallacy of the lukewarm moral life is to believe that our sole responsibility is to eliminate vice from our lives. In the absence of a sincere and focused effort to grow in virtue and an openness to God's will for our lives, vice will creep into our lives in the form of a hundred different self-centered and self-destructive habits. No man or woman is born virtuous. Good habits are not infused. Virtue must be sought out and can be acquired only by continual practice. You learn to ride a bicycle by riding a bicycle. You learn to play baseball by playing baseball. You learn to be patient by practicing patience. You become virtuous by practicing virtue. For thousands of years, politicians, philosophers, and priests have all argued about the best way to organize society. Many organizing concepts, including duty, obligation, law, force, obedience, tyranny, and greed have been employed throughout history by various societies and organizations. But what is the ultimate organizing principle? It is virtue. Two virtuous people will always have a better relationship than two people without virtue. Two patient people will always have a better relationship than two impatient people. Two kind and generous people will always have a better relationship than two selfish people. Two humble people will always have a better relationship than two proud people. Not sometimes, but every single time. And the world is just an extension of your relationship with me and my relationship with you. If we are both striving to live virtuous lives, our relationship will prosper. But when we give up our striving for virtue, our relationship will disintegrate. Virtue leads to better people, better living, better relationships, and a better world. If humanity is to flourish in the 21st century, it will be because we realize once and for all that the key organizing concept of a truly great civilization is virtue. The connection between virtue and the flourishing of an individual is unquestionable. To live a life of virtue is to move beyond the restlessness and chaos that agonize the human heart and embrace a life of order and coherence. The church has always proclaimed that the seven foundational virtues are the cornerstone of the mortal, moral life. This foundation is made up of the supernatural virtues, faith, hope, and love, and the four cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude. The supernatural virtues free us from self-centeredness 
protect us from the ultimate vice, pride, and dispose us to live in relationship with God. The cardinal virtues, which are sometimes referred to as the human virtues, allow us to acquire the self-mastery necessary to make us free and capable of love. They do this by ordering our passions and guiding our conduct in accordance with faith and reason. The only way for our lives to genuinely improve is by acquiring virtue. To grow in virtue is to improve as a human being, to become a better person today than I was yesterday. This is accomplishment. Ernest Hemingway observed, there is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. Virtue is central to the growth of a Christian. Earlier in our journey together, we discussed how people tend to emulate the five people they spend most time with. Are your five people virtuous people? If not, you need to make a change. And you may be thinking, I can't make a change. My five people are set and they are not virtuous. But let's think back to something else we've learned on this pilgrimage together. Don't let what you can't do interfere with what you can do. The devil wants you to focus on what's not possible. Jesus helps us to focus on what is possible and find new possibilities. Maybe the people around you have no interest in virtue, but I look across my bookshelf and I see plenty of virtuous people you can spend time with. Mother Teresa, Fulton Sheen, C.S. Lewis, Teresa of Avila, Teresa of Lisieux, Ag Augustine, Aquinas, Chesterton, Tolkien, Kreeft, Dorothy Day. The list is endless. Virtues are the habits of the saints. And then of course, there is Jesus in the Eucharist. Jesus is virtue person personified. He is honest, patient, kind, humble, courageous, compassionate, hopeful, wise, generous, gentle, resilient, loving. And whenever we act virtuously, we are in some mysterious and amazing way, usher God's grace and goodness into the world. Virtue became man so that man could become virtue. The Eucharist is, as St. Peter Amard observed, a divine storehouse filled with every virtue. God has placed it in the world so that everyone may draw from it. So draw from it. Spend time with Jesus in the Eucharist and draw from that storehouse abundantly and often. Trust, surrender, believe, receive. Lesson, to live a life of virtue is to move beyond the restlessness and chaos that agonize the human heart and embrace a life of order and coherence. There is a clear connection between a life of virtue and human flourishing. Virtue leads to better people, better living, better relationships, and a better world. The Eucharist is a divine storehouse filled with every virtue. The more time we spend with Jesus in the Eucharist, the more abundantly we can draw virtue from that storehouse. Virtue of the day, generosity. The virtue of generosity mirrors the abundance of God's generosity. Give something away every day. It need not be a material possession or money. Give a compliment, a smile, advice, encouragement. Express your appreciation catch someone doing something right. Give everywhere you go to everyone you meet. Live a life of staggering generosity. Spiritual communion. We can all say in our hearts, Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. Every day I long for more of you. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally at this moment, I invite you to come, dwell in my heart. 
May this spiritual communion increase my desire for the Eucharist. You are the healer of my soul. Take the blindness from my eyes, the deafness from my ears, the darkness from my mind, and the hardness from my heart. Fill me with the grace, wisdom, and courage to do your will in all things. My Lord and my God, draw me close to you, nearer than ever before. Amen. Number 44.
Day 32, the presentation of Jesus. This is the will of God, that you be holy. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every first male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will, uh, that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Have you ever waited for something with great anticipation? Did you wait patiently? What are you waiting for in your life right now? Simeon had waited. This was his moment. He had waited patiently, and he had prayed patiently. Now he took baby Jesus in his arms. Imagine the emotion as he pulled the child to his chest, his long gray beard caressing the child's head, his face filled with a strange combination of joy and anguish, joy for the present, anguish for the future he knew or sensed the child would face, the tears streaming down his face. Put yourself there in the temple that day. Mary and Joseph had brought Jesus to present him to the Lord in obedience to the Jewish law. Mary, the mother of God, submits her child to the law of Moses. Think about it. They are presenting God to God, and yet they are obedient to the law. If anyone was ever exempt from a law, it was Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in this moment. But they chose obedience. This is a momentous act of humility. How often do we decide that a particular rule or law doesn't apply to us? When we drive faster than the speed limit, neglect to declare some taxable income, or leave our phones on when they should be turned off, we are really saying, that law doesn't apply to me. That's for everyone else. I am above the law. This is our arrogance. Poverty, chastity, and obedience. Obedience is by far the hardest to live. A wise old monk once told me, to whom are you willing to be obedient? We are allergic to the very word. It seems we are obedient only to our own desires. Addicted to comfort and convenience, we reject the very notion of obedience. No wonder we have such a hard time surrendering in obedience to the will of God. The word obedience comes from the Latin word obedire, which means to listen deeply. Mary listened deeply. Simeon listened deeply. By listening deeply, they saw the wisdom of God's way. With these inspirations in our hearts and minds, we turn to Jesus and pray. Lord, give us the patience of Simeon, knowing that our impatience gets in the way of obedience.
Give us the grace necessary to see obedience as something that is life-giving rather than something oppressive. Help us to become a little more patient each day and light a flame of desire for obedience in our hearts. Inspire us to realize that your guidance, rules, and laws are designed in part to protect us from the great misery people experience when they reject your wisdom. And knowing that we cannot love you if we are not obedient to you, we present ourselves to you today just as Mary and Joseph presented Jesus. Instruct us in all things, guide us in all things, command us in all things. We desire to be your faithful servants. Mary, pray for us and teach us to listen deeply to your son. Amen. Are you ready? I think you are. Just as Joseph and Mary presented Jesus in the temple, tomorrow you will consecrate yourself and your life to Jesus in the Eucharist. This will be an epic moment in your life. Consecration to the Eucharist will change you in ways that you cannot even begin to understand. And so, my advice to you today is simple and practical. Tomorrow is going to be a momentous day. Get to bed early and get a good night's rest. Trust, surrender, believe, receive. Lesson. Learn to listen deeply to the voice of God in your life. Our desire to direct our own actions is born from ignorance and arrogance. Obedience to the will of God is the life-giving path to flourishing and become all God created you to be. Try it in some small moments and feel your soul begin to fill with joy. This will give you the courage to surrender to his will more with every passing day. Virtue of the day, obedience. The virtue of obedience is simply doing what God asks, even when you would prefer to do something else or think there is a better way. Obedience to God and obedience to a virtue-seeking earthly authority are both profound blessings that liberate the soul and make the peaceful acceptance possible. Spiritual communion. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. Every day I long for more of you. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally at this moment, I invite you to come and dwell in my heart. May this spiritual communion increase my desire for the Eucharist. You are the healer of my soul. Take the blindness from my eyes, the deafness from my ears, the darkness from my mind, and the hardness from my heart. Fill me with the grace, wisdom, and courage to do your will in all things. My Lord and my God, draw me close to you, nearer than ever before. Amen.
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, send us your Holy Spirit. Quiet our mind, our souls, our thoughts, our words. Talk to us. <coughs> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, talk to them, to our hearts. And speak the word we need. Our eternal life. Lord, thank you because you have a word you, ha you have the word of eternal life thank you because you are the only one that can give us eternal life nobody else and nothing else no one else beside you you are the only one who can give us eternal life. Thank you because you are the only one who can bring peace to our hearts through mercy and forgiveness. Lord, forgive all our sins. You know the pain of our hearts. You know the pain we cause to others. The little, the biggest wounds we made in our, in other people, in our families. Lord, forgive us. Give us your mercy. Wash our hearts. And help us to forgive. Help us to feel your peace. And help us to guard your peace in our hearts. Lord Jesus, send your Holy Spirit upon us. Because when you come, you make everything new. We want to be new. Empty ourselves and fill us, fulfill us with your presence. Rebuild the temple of our hearts. Rebuild our hearts, Jesus. Clean our hearts. Clean our mind. Clean our souls. And fulfill us with your presence. Because you're the only one who can give life. You're the only one who can give eternal life. Send your spirit upon us. Show us the beauty of your presence in our lives.
mercy, God, for I have sinned.
Jesus, our hearts hunger for you. Our hearts hunger for you. Without knowing it, conscious of it, perhaps our hearts screaming out for you. hearts hunger for you, Jesus. They hunger for you. Jesus, help us to renounce, to reject everything in our lives that keeps us from you. Whatever fear, Whatever sin, whatever attachment, whatever false belief, whatever influence of the world that binds us into slavery. It's only in you that we find true love. A love that sees us in everything that we don't want to see in ourselves. A love that welcomes us when we're in the darkest darkest moments of sin. A heart that longs for us with so much compassion. A heart that yearns and calls to us with so much mercy. hunger for you, Jesus. Sometimes we're starving and dying. Because we need your love so much. Come to us, Jesus. Come to us. Help us to let go, to let go of every obstacle, everything in us that prevents us from saying, yes, Jesus, I surrender to you. I abandon myself to you. I choose you. I choose you, Jesus. in our hearts to love you. Soften our hearts to say yes. To let ourselves be embraced. To allow ourselves to be loved. you, Jesus. We choose to love you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We hunger for you, Jesus. Number 
give you my fears I give you my life and you empty my mind you empty my heart you empty Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you for this moment where we can all be together and pray. And we can just be, put everything in front of you. Thank you, Jesus, for all the words today. Help me to remember. Let something remain in my heart, Jesus. I'm poor, but I want to listen and hear what you have to say to my life, to my life, for me, just for me.
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of community. Thank you, Jesus, for each man and woman in community in this moment. Thank you for their struggles, for the moments that they fall. Thank you when they get up and come back to you. Thank you, Jesus, for all the fruits of community that we can contemplate with our eyes. Thank you, Jesus, for the sisters, for the priests, for the men and women that continue to come, for all those who continue to give of their lives, to give thanks, that recognize the graces that they've received. Thank you, Jesus. We ask you to continue blessing these sons and daughters of community, sons and daughters of Mother of Yira, their families, their children. Thank you, Jesus. We offer you those that aren't here, all of those that are struggling the most, that are lost the faith, but we know that there's a spark of hope left for each one. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for each Chinacolino, for every child that it was born of a life that was born again. How beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you continue to call us to your heart. Jesus, help me to live well. Help me to live well like Mother Vera taught us and asked of us in this school of life. And we to continue to give thanks, Jesus. My heart is very selfish. I forget to give thanks. I take things for granted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, that you live in me. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life. Thank you, Jesus, because you welcomed me. And I have the gift of welcoming life with my own arms, with my own heart, with my own hands. For this gift of life. Help us to live it well, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
will stay, we will stay. Give us the strength to fight. We will walk together in your light. Glory be to you. We will walk together in your light. We will stay, we will stay. Give us the strength to fight. We will walk together in your light. Glory be to you. You made in my love, you made in me, and then your joy will be complete. You made in my love, you made in me. Let's look at Jesus and tell him, I want to remain in your love. <coughs> because you are the only one, Lord. Who can bring our lives to an accomplishment. Lord Jesus Christ, I want to remain in your love. Lord Jesus, thank you. Because you chose us, the last ones, the broken ones, the blind, the deaf, the crimple, the nothing, the death, the prideful, the dishonest, the violent, the poor, the humiliated ones, the desolated, the desperate, the useless, As your people. Thank you because you, you feel good with us. Thank you because you make of our nothing the place where you like to be. Lord Jesus, thank you because you brought us from darkness to light. Thank you because you love to walk with us. You love to stay with us. You love to cure us. You love to heal us. You love to forgive us. Thank you because you love us. Thank you because you bless us. Please, Lord, save us. Save each one of us. From now on, cure the best, heal the best. Form us in, your, in our present.
give a future to our lives. Sei un grande Gesù. We love you, Jesus. I try my best. Take me. Use me. together. last thank you to our mother Elvira Elvira thank you
I go to say goodbye to your parents, good night to your parents, and then we can start back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Okay? Thank you, thank you. All we can say is thank you. Uh, good night. Uh, a, a quick good night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. We have to prepare for tomorrow. I'm taking this. Nine a.m. tomorrow morning. Nine. Be on time, because before we start, nine, nove, nueve, nine, nine, nueve. Buenas noches. Buenas buenas noches.